Good day. The state television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Shahen Meherian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, U.S. Senators Padil and Rubio introduced resolutions condemning Azerbaijan's blockade of Artsakh. Armenia voices serious concern that Azerbaijan could be preparing new aggression against Artsakh. Grigor Minasyan made the president of the ECHR in Strasbourg. Exchanges on the decision to open the Berdor Road. Baku authorities open targeted fire in the direction of Yeras. Today is Sayat Nova's birthday. Shahen Mehriyan was born on January 2, 1952 in the village of Gulistan in the Shahumyan region. After graduating from high school with honors in the 1969, he was admitted to ESU Faculty of Economics. In 1975, he graduated from the university and returned to the Shahumyan region. He worked as an economist, first secretary of the regional trade union. From 1981 to 1988, he was director of a cannery. In 1988 to 1991, head of the agricultural industry department. In 1991 to 1992, chairman and first secretary of the regional district committee. Shahen Mehriyan was one of the first to organize armed squads. In 1991, after after Operation Ring, the enemy captured the villages of Yergenj, Buzluk, and Manashid. In September, Shahen Mehriyan organized a special operation following which three villages were liberated between September 11 and 13. In June 1992, Shahen Mehriyan assembled in 25 strong squad in a village of Hatterk and entered the enemy's rear. A number of Martakert villages were liberated with the direct help of the Haiduks, Hatterk, Ahnabert, Madagis, Tonashen, Dastagiri, Sersank, Reservoir. On March 11, 1993, a military unit was created by the Array Minister of Defense and Shahan Mehriyan was appointed its commander. Since 1992, in the Shahumyan region, which was under the control of Azerbaijani forces, in the enemy's rare and unprecedented and large scale war was waged during the Artsakh Liberation War with Mehriyan's idea and initiative. The Armenian forces operating in the Shahumyan forest, the Yagniks, not only created serious problems for the enemy, but according to many, could eventually liberate the entire region. In April 1993, the helicopter after carrying Shahen Mehriyan and his comrades in arms was shot down. After the commander's death, some of the partisans continued to fight, even achieving some successes. But the Shahumyan's region was still not liberated. Thanks to the peculiarities of our culture, which has a history stretching back thousands of years, the art of Armenian jewelry has always been at the center of attention of Armenian and foreign cultural experts alike. When Armenians were able to decorate the pages of small books with miniatures, engraving detailed images like embroidery on stone, giving meaning to each motif, many nations didn't even exist on the face of the earth. Our art has never lacked ornaments, and the ancient roots of its field have always surprised even the most experienced professionals. In general, in general, every nation has created its ornaments according to traditions, custom and mythology, and now the most common ways of commemorating them are through clothing, jewelry, and accessories. Armenians' ornaments were not placed in random places, such as on the costume, but were embroidered where they were supposed to protect. The collar, the chest, the edges of the arms and side openings and the throat were particularly emphasized. The origin of the ornaments was almost always digital. The wedding planket was embroidered with particular delicacy, using gold and silver threads. Special decorative motifs were used on apron sheets, bags, pockets, and other accessories in the costume system of Van, Vasburak, and Metz, Haik, Artsakh, and Zangezur. More famous worldwide are the symbol of the cross, the ornament resembling the Armenian capital letter T, the Tree of Life, hexagonal lozenge stars, images of bird staples, and so on. U.S. Senators Alex Padil and Marco Rubio, with the support of a wide range of U.S. civil social coalition partners, came together on Thursday to introduce a resolution to fight the blockade. The resolution states the following. First, the resolution encourages the United States government and the international community to petition the United Nations Security Council, the Organization for Security and Cooperation in Europe, and other relevant international organizations to investigate all war crimes committed by Azerbaijani forces against Armenian civilians. Two, calls for the deployment of international observers along the Berzo Road and Artsakh to examine the possibilities for more effective and sustainable guarantees of security and peaceful development. Three, calls on the President of the United States to immediately 
to terminate any new existing or anticipated U.S. military security assistance to the Baku authorities and to fully implement Section 907 of the Freedom Support Act and to fully implement Section 907 of the Freedom Support Act. For supports U.S. sanctions under existing legislative authority against the Baku authorities responsible for the blockade of Artsakh and other human rights violations against Armenians in the region, including the targeting of civilian infrastructure and the destruction of historical and cultural sites and places of worship of great importance to Armenians. 5. The United States supports effort by the European Union and the international community to provide humanitarian assistance to the victims of Baku aggression in Artsakh. The government of Western Armenia expresses its appreciation for the interest shown by American senators in Artsakh. It is true that the senators personally involved the U.S. government and international organizations in the process of imposing the most severe sanctions against the policy of genocide and violations of the rights of Artsakh and its people by the Baku authorities. According to Armen Press, the message issued by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Armenia expressly stated, For a long time, the Minister of Defense in Baku has been disseminating almost daily false information about ceasefire violations by the Artsakh Defense Army in the zone of responsibility of Russian peacekeepers in Artsakh. It should be noted that in the information materials published by the Russian peacekeepers, ceasefire violations have been recorded only by the Azerbaijani side. We call on the Russian peacekeepers to strictly respect the ceasefire regime and to investigate all incidents reported by the Baku authorities, publicly presenting the whole situation. The Republic of Armenia is convinced that there is an urgent and pressing need to address the issues of rights and security of the people of Artsakh within the framework of the international mechanism through the Baku Stepanakia dialogue and calls on the international community to support this process. The government of Western Armenia finds it important that the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Eastern Armenia condemns the false and misleading information of the Baku authorities and calls on international organizations organizations to be vigilant on the behavior and misrepresentations of the Baku authorities, to which we have referred more than once and even opened the procedure against the Baku authorities under the ECHR on the issue of the Shushi refugees who expelled from their homes find themselves today without status and without shelter. RA Minister of Justice Grigor Minasian is on a two-day working visit to the French Republic. The purpose of the working visit is to discuss with senior officials of the Council of Europe the reform program of the Ministry of Justice within the framework of the RAEC cooperation, in particular joint achievements in the fields of human rights protection, democracy, rule of law, and prospects of cooperation. The parties discussed the court's decision to initiate disciplinary and enforcement proceedings based on the violation of international obligations assumed by the Republic of Armenia in the field of human rights protection in the legal system. Mr. Minasian specifically highlighted the European Court's decisions to apply interim measures on the basis of the RA government's request in connection with Armenians' complaints against the Baku authorities, which refer to civilian population, person captured and detained by the Baku authorities during the 44-day war in 2020, as well as afterward violation of the convention. Minasian also highlighted the provisional decisions adopted by the ECHR, by which Azerbaijan was obliged to ensure the necessary movement along the Berta Road. The parties also discussed existing mechanisms for monitoring the implementation of ECHR judgment by the Committee of Ministers of the Council of Europe. The government of Western Armenia reiterates that Azerbaijan must withdraw immediately from all occupied areas of Artsakh. A statement issued by the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Armenia reads in part, On June 13, the armed forces of Baku, once again resorting to the use of force, opened fire on the positions of the armed forces of the Republic of Armenia and on civilian facilities near the Yerak settlement of the Republic of Armenia. It is not forces at the Baku site aimed fire at the metal works under construction in Yerak involving foreign investments. This was preceded by false accusation from Baku to the Armenian side regarding the construction of the mentioned plant. The the Republic of Armenia had previously stated that the construction of the plant was in full compliance with its international obligations. By shelling the plant under construction, Baku is now demonstrating open defiance of Armenia's internationally recognized border. Moreover, Baku is consistent in proving that, in every aspect of the negotiation process with the Republic of Armenia, it is guided by the principle of imposing its desired solutions on the Republic of Armenia through the illegal use of force, with weak and permissive response of the international community. Thank <laughs> you.
The great Armenian poet of the late Middle Ages, Sayat Nova, real name Harutun Sayadian, was born on June 14, 1712 in Tiflis. Given a loom at the age of 12, he learned to wave and soon became so skilled that he built a new loom to make canvas. Singing and music had fascinated him since childhood, perhaps under the influence of his father and mother. By the age of 30, Sayat Nova had perfected the art of true playing, learning simple and mixed modes and measures, inventing games, adapting particular melodies. He probably traveled throughout the Middle East for many years, visiting Persia, India, and various regions of Western Armenia, making pilgrimages to the monastery of San Karapet de Monch in Tarun until he was universally recognized and Christian Sayat Nova, the song hunter. Sayat Nova rendered great services to Armenian literature and spiritual culture in the late Middle Ages. He is the epitome of Armenian Gusana folk poetry, an artist extraordinary gifted by nature. He is the first poet of Armenian reality who played a major role in the spiritual reproachment of the peoples of the Caucasus with his multilingual works. Since the 18th century, many Georgian, Azerbaijan, and Armenian poets have been influenced by Sayat Nova. He also has a permanent place in the history of Georgian lyric poetry. His works have been translated into many of the world's languages. The World Peace Council decided in 1963 to celebrate the 250th anniversary of Sayat Nova's birth. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. Thank you. 